Okay, hopefully that's better with the sound. Thank you uh, for letting me know, Barbara. Uh, if you can all hear me, just give me a thumbs up or a yes in the comments. I'd appreciate that. And um, we are just getting underway. Yvonne didn't have any sound, but hopefully you do now, Yvonne. G'day, Julie Chadwick. Welcome. All right. So we're just giving people time to join in. Sound is working. Thank you, Misty. Barbara's saying great. So the sound's good now. That's good. There's um, So for those of you who joined me on the previous live streams, uh, you'll know that I've been investing in uh, upgrading all of our broadcast live stream equipment. There's a lot of moving parts, <laughs> more than I thought there would be. But... Um, so you know, for the until I really get used to controlling it and using it all, it might be some um, some technical issues along the way. I hope not, but I think we'll get them sorted out pretty quickly. And uh, it should make for the ability to be able to broad uh, to live stream and, and show you lots of different camera angles. I'm going to add other cameras and things um, soon. So um, you know, bear with me. This will only get better and better, and the quality of our videos only get better and better as well. G'day, Tommy, Sue, Rose, Irwin. Thank you for joining me. Great to have you here. Okay, and for those who are just joining us, uh, let us know where you are joining from, whereabouts in the world you are. I'll show you what we're gonna work on today. We're gonna play around with this little painting here. This is a sketch that I did, um, quick little sketch, and I think it maybe took me 10 minutes. I was just had a bit of excess paint, and I was just roughing out some ideas, and I kinda liked the feel of it, and, uh, I thought we'd have a little play around with that today and see if we can do something with that using the water mixable oil paints. So, um, which if you've been following me, we've just done a course on water mixable oils and you'll find that they, uh, they paint pretty much like traditional oils and also um, acrylics. They've got the benefit of both. So that's what we're going to play around with. And what we'll do is I've got a 12 inch by 16 inch um, board here. So this is just an MDF board that I've prepared. And if you uh, are interested in learning how to prepare F MDF boards, um, look out for this week's Art Studio chat and I'll be going through how to prepare the boards. So um, look out for that video. Um, I'll show you, you know, what I do to prepare the boards. It's a great way of painting or great surface because uh, it... Um, it's cost effective, you know, and also storage wise, fantastic. So, g'day Misty in Fort Worth. Thank you for joining me on YouTube. We're broadcasting today to uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch and Periscope. Although I don't know that Twitch and Periscope have really uh, cottoned on or, or noticed that we're there yet. That's okay. Um, Richard, g'day Richard, how are you? Great setup, thank you Richard. Um, in the woods in Stratford in the UK, beautiful part of the world there. Can't wait to get back to the UK. So yeah, we're gonna paint on 12 by 16 inch prepared board, MDF board, and we're gonna be using the Windsor & Newton uh, paint. So I'm just gonna pop out some paint and we will, just gonna make sure I put it in the right spot. We will have a play around with this painting. While I'm putting paint out, I'll just show you the image. This is what we're gonna paint. It was a quick little sketch that I did, and I thought, ah, oh, I kind of like the feel of that. Um, I like little cottagey sort of scenes, and um, there's something about that. And I just made that sketch up. Um, you know, it's just something that I was just fooling around with one rainy day, and I like the feel of it, you know, like that sort of homeliness to it. So that's what we're going to play around with. And it's on just a tiny little uh, canvas. And what I thought we'd do is have a play around with um, putting it onto a larger board and see if we can make something of it. So just bear with me, just putting out paint. I'll show you my palette what we're doing here. So I've got the French ultramarine blue and the alizarin crimson and some yellow ochre so that's my basic palette if you've seen any of our videos and things like that in the past um morning ian thanks for joining us in perth mate hope you're well g'day matthew oh that's awesome thanks matthew 
glad you're able to jump on the live. Um, yeah, if you've seen any of my videos in the past, I basically use the French Ultramarine Blue, the Alizarin Crimson, and the Yellow Ochre, and that makes up you know, 80% of my uh, palette. And um, good morning, Ash. Great that you can join us. Andrea, welcome. Um, yeah, it makes up 80% of my palette, and then I'll have a couple of booster colours that I'll add to that, which we'll, um, we'll get to. So, um, so I'm using the Windsor & Newton Artisan paints for this. These are the water mixable, I'll show you there. These are water mixable. Um, so if you're an acrylic painter, I highly recommend having a go at these because you can use them with water. And if you are an oil painter and you're worried about the toxicity of the mediums and so on, the solvents, this is a really happy medium um, in between. So um, I love oil paintings, but I, where's my coffee gone? It's a disaster. Um, <laughs> can't do anything without coffee. I love oil painting, traditional oil painting, but the, um, the solvents were killing me. So I switched to the water mixable oils and uh, absolutely love them as a, as a way to paint. So for the last two years at Learn to Paint Academy, we've been doing acrylic painting and uh, I'm going to slowly start to move it over to water mixable oils. I think it's just gives a beautiful balance between the two. So feel free to ask me questions. I want to make this interactive and want to, uh, you know, get you guys to ask questions and let me know, you know, if you're unsure about something. And the other thing is if you stick, stay around to the end, limited edition um, merchandise. So I've got mouse mats. I'm going to give, give some of these away on our live streams just as a thank you for joining me, right? Because it's pretty lonely doing live streams. Um, a uh, what do you call those a tote bag i've got coffee mugs things like that so if you stick around to the end i'll have a little quiz and we'll give away a prize both on uh, youtube and facebook and if anyone turns up on periscope or twitch um well that's a good question richard glad you asked so richard's just asked where do i get the coffee mug from vistaprint is where i'm getting them from um, but i'm also experimenting with other suppliers overseas um g'day Salon. celine from ohio What's the difference, Andre? Good question. Um, asking about the drying time with um, oils, and I'll, we'll talk about that as we go. And um, you love the bag. I, I kind of like it too, Misty. I thought I'm going to stick all my paints and brushes in there. So when I go plain air painting, right, I've got at least I've got a bag to keep it organised rather than having it scattered around everywhere. Um, yeah. So Andre, we, we'll we'll answer that as we go. But basically. There's a two-stage drying process, and uh, first of all, the water has to dry out of the oil paint. So that usually takes an hour, two hours, depending on your climate. And then you've got the traditional oil drying uh, time frame as well. And uh, that can be, you know, six to ten days for it to touch dry, but then maybe six months for it to cure. So it's like traditional oils in that sense. But that's, that's the drying process really is the same as traditional oils because... Um, you know, the solvent, if you're using like a turpentine or something to, to thin the paint down, that dries out within a couple of hours as well. So, um, and then you've got the same drying process as what you do with the water mixable. Let me just, um, I've got a few comments. Joan, have tried them and liked them. Um, I'm just preparing to do my second painting with them. Fantastic. I think eventually I'll switch. Yeah, I'm the same, Joan. Eventually I'll switch entirely. Tina in Ireland, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Rita, well, everyone from Ireland's joining us. That's awesome. Um, feel free to share, guys, the, uh, the live stream as well. Um, I've set up at what size canvas. Okay, so Matthew, this is a board. It's an MDF board. Look out for a video which I'll be posting this afternoon on how to prepare the board. And um, it's a 12 by 16. Okay, so this is the painting that we're going to have a go. A little sketch that I did. Okay. And um, let me just show you. There you go. You can have a closer look at it there. So I'm going to try and transfer that onto the 12 by 16. Thanks, Ian. I thought it was better than uh, the, the caricature was better than me having my <laughs> ugly mug on things. So, um, so yeah, I thought it was a bit of fun. And just give me one second. Welcome, everyone, on Facebook and on... YouTube, thank you for joining me. We will start painting in one sec. I, um, I've only just set this 
live stream system up and I'm still learning it. And I, I kind of feel that for the first few, it might be a bit clunky. But then um, once we get underway, uh, it's a pretty simple system for me to drive once I've got all the parts right. Um, so it should all be good. Okay, two seconds. All right. G'day, John. Thanks for joining us, mate. Not sure what time it would be in Taiwan there, but I appreciate you joining. Cindy from Arizona, welcome. Mario, another island. Another person from Ireland, welcome. That's awesome. Can't wait to get to Ireland. All right, I'm going to do some painting. Um, enough chit-chat. <laughs> Let's get stuck into some painting. So, uh, 12 by 16, and here we go. Pop that over there. So, yeah, French ultramarine blue, the alizarin crimson, yellow ochre is basically what I'm going to use for the majority of our painting here and a little small flat brush and if you've seen any of our videos before you'll know that we start out just by doing a really basic drawing or sketch so to do that I'm just going to mix up the uh, two darks the blue and the red mix that into a dark You're just using a little bit of water okay so I, there are a lot of mediums you can get with the water mixable oils but uh, I'm just going to stick with uh, just using water with them, okay? So probably the most important thing about this little um, drawing or this little painting here is going to be this cottage. So that's where I'll start. Now, if you've been following me, you'll know the more method of painting is uh, three steps. Step one is always our drawing. Okay, so because this is probably the most important part of it, I'll just start with just getting the shape of this right. Does it want a little veranda there? Probably does. I don't know, not convinced about the veranda. Probably wants a little bull nose veranda or something on it. Let me know what you think. Um, Hi, Sarah in Virginia, welcome. G'day, Darlene. Brad, thanks for joining us, mate. Joyce, welcome in Canada. And Comico in Wisconsin. Awesome that you guys have all joined us. Really appreciate it. Um, let us see a little chimney. One of the challenges with setting this up is getting the right camera angles so that uh, I'm not in the shot so that you can actually see what I'm painting. It's not an easy thing to achieve. Trust me, I've been playing around with all sorts of setups and uh, I think we're getting there, getting to that point where you can see the shot and I'm not too much in it if I lean over. Yeah, then I start to get in if I lean over too much, um, but hopefully it's it's looking okay. Just let me know if you think it's working okay, um, and let me know if you've got any feedback on the setup. I always appreciate the feedback. Okay, so that's our little little cottage there, and I kind of like the idea that there's when I was playing around with it, there's this little sort of dirt road, I guess, that was running past this cottage. And um, I got the, I, I was inspired to paint this from just some of my travels, you know, like I, I spend quite a bit of time out painting around plain air around where I live here in Queensland. And, uh, you know, there's um, a lot of very isolated little houses and so on. Um, Oh, good. Thank you, Ian, for the feedback. I prefer that. Uh, Sarah's asking, do I prefer painting on board? Uh, look, I've debated that question back and forward over the years. I do like painting on board, but I also like canvas. Uh, you know, there's something about really a big canvas where it's got a bit of give and a bit of play in it. I do like that as well. Look, I don't really have a preference. I guess probably one motivating factor 
for painting with boards is they're a lot cheaper to prepare and buy. So again, I, I think I mentioned earlier that I've uh, got a video coming out today on how to prepare the board um, and do it dirt cheap. You know, like you can really prepare boards cheaply. And uh, but the most important thing is I'm running out of storage. You know, <laughs> if you could see, I've got a, a bedroom in here which is full of paintings, and I've got half the garage as well, and I'm running out of storage. And the boards are probably the best solution, or loose canvas is another good solution, although loose canvas isn't, um, I don't think, I don't know. I, I, the problem with loose canvases is it's harder to sell them as loose canvases, so then you gotta get them framed. So what I'm doing here is just making up trees. And you can see the technique, um, well, the technique's really scrubbing technique, isn't it? I'm just using the, f the side of the brush there. Like I'm not using the full face, I'm using the edge of the brush. I'm just scratching in some trees here. And um, making them up. Basically, I just want a little cluster of trees just as part of a setting there. It probably needs one larger sort of gum tree type thing there. Um, I'm have coffee while I have think about it. Let's have another look at the photo. So yeah, probably needs one larger gum tree on the side. Matthew, with the boards, um, in the video I talk about you can either create a smooth surface for the boards or you can create a textured surface. And I like a textured surface, so it just creates a bit of uh, character in the uh, painting. Yeah, Sarah, I think that's a good idea to experiment, try out different things. Um, Gladys, it's great that we can see every time you pick up paint off the palette. Yep, thank you, Gladys. I've been working hard on the setup and a lot of our Learn to Paint Academy members who took up our offer to become a lifetime member are to thank for that as well. Um, because if it wasn't for them, we, um, you know, they, they helped us invest in all the equipment. G'day, Zah from London. Thanks, John. Appreciate the feedback, Matt. Good morning, Chloe, in Brisbane. Oh, Chloe from the uh, Art Lovers Australia, how are you? That was a fun conference. Came back with my head warping. <laughs> so what I'm talking about there is um, Art Lovers Australia. Um, they recently, they're, they're a big online gallery here in Australia. And uh, they recently held a two-day art business conference. And um, it was quite a good idea. You would think that there'd be more of that, but... Um, I haven't seen any other art business conferences in Australia. Probably are around the world, but yeah, met Chloe there. And we, we had a fun, fun time there. Learn a few things, got a few ideas. Okay, so for those of you who have been following me for a while, you probably realise that I've, without really thinking about it, gone into step two, started blocking in. I sort of was in the mode of painting how I would paint normally myself which is, um, might bring that main tree down lower, hey? Yeah, so I'd, I'd sort of like normally just roll from, um, the drawing straight into blocking in. Whereas when we teach, how about we put a shadow through there? That could work. Um, yeah, when I teach, I sort of break the process down a bit more, but the way I actually paint, it's obviously not as, um, not as rigid as that. Okay, so just blocking our darks here at the moment. And feel free to ask me questions, guys and gals. So I'm probably going to go for about an hour today. So we started at 9 o'clock my time. We'll probably go through to about uh, 10. Don't know that we'll finish this painting in that time. So, you know, we'll come back to it another time. And you can see that, that bit I've done over there before, that's pretty much touch dry already. Um, so for whoever asked before about how long does it take to dry, the water's evaporating. Now I've got studio lights and things in here. 
Um, so the water is evaporating at a great rate of knots. Sorry, didn't realize what camera I was on. Um, so yeah, it's getting touch dry in there pretty quickly, but it's very thin layer of paint. So I've thinned it right down with the water. And uh, dark in there. Something like that. Do you like that composition? I think that works. G'day Stephen. Thanks mate, I appreciate that. I always appreciate your support. Nan in Mississippi. G'day, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Love to go to Mississippi. I've been uh, down into Texas and other places in the states i think i went to georgia atlanta now sarah i'm using uh water water mixable oil paints today um which i'm starting to use more and more of transitioning across to to water mixable oil paints sirius studio in canada g'day misty hopefully you can see i think i was just on the wrong camera angle just a moment ago so hopefully you can see it okay Thanks, Yvonne. Diane, welcome. G'day, Rita. I should visit Nan. Yes, I should. Um, I'd like that very much. Okay, we need to get a dark in around our cottage here. I'm going to go slightly thicker paint. Just again, using our blue and our red. And I might just pop just a um, little tiny little pinhead of white. You can see how much white I've got there. Not much, but I want to get a dark grey. A little pinhead of the yellow just to help it grey off a bit. So what is everyone painting today? Have you got anything that you're working on? Hmm. Might just cool that tone back a bit. So I plan to do these live streams a couple of times a week where I'll be painting and chatting. And then on Fridays, I'm going to do a Q&A and an update on what's happening with the Learn to Paint Academy because we're doing so many things in the Learn to Paint Academy. I don't feel like I'm really communicating that with our members um, well enough. So that for the Friday morning session, we'll be uh, you know chatting about what's going on in the Learn to Paint Academy, what new courses we have coming up and so on. So if you are a member of the Learn to Paint Academy, thank you. Um, greatly appreciate you guys being so. Got a bit of clean. Y Yvonne's painting a landscape with a cottage. Yeah, fancy that. <laughs> so am I. Vera's working on a dog. Nice. That's something I want to get more into. Is it easy to change to oils? Um, if you it's difficult to change to from acrylics to traditional oils, I, I think. Um, Stephen, there's a, a little bit, you know, painting wet on wet with oils can be a challenge. But going to the water mixable oils, I think you might find just that little bit easier. Um, so, look, the only, the only way to know is to give it a go. And Stephen, I think from memory you're in Australia, and if you are, try the Montmartre uh, H2O water mixable oils is a starting point because they're cheap to have a go at. Rita's painting a bridge over a river. Fantastic. John doing more of your Chinese ink landscapes. You really should start making videos on that, my friend. Teresa Cassandra Huff Cornet said to tab. I'm not sure what that means. I'm sorry. Uh... Thanks, Siri Studio. It's been a work in progress getting it all set up. Is there a difference between the texture feel? Uh, the te no, not really. I think it feels very similar to um, traditional oils, definitely. Um, and I've just done a course at the Learn to Paint Academy on water mixable oils. And basically, the, the conclusion I came to with them was that they're just like traditional oils. Um, they feel the same. You know, they really do. Um, now, maybe different brands don't, but the uh, the Windsor & Newton Artisan ones that I'm using definitely do. 
Misty's painting flowers, terrific. Angelita, I'm afraid I don't speak, I only speak English, so apologies. Perfecta la manera de, sounds Spanish, but I'm not sure what you're saying. Sarah works in oils, excellent. Terrific, do I find ultramarine blue and yellow, I could give you the best greens. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about best greens, um, Matthew, I, I think they give you a green, right? But mixing green is more than just a blue and a yellow. Um, you, what you really need is a, a warm and a cool blue, a warm and a cool yellow, a warm and a cool red. And you, when you know how to mix those, that'll give you the greatest possible variety of greens. Um, you never have to buy green from a tube, you know what I mean? Like you learn to mix it properly. So you, having a bit of red in there is always important as well. Um, so, yeah. But why do I use the ultramarine blue, yellow ochre and lives in crimson is because I'm a landscape painter and I've found that combination to give the best effects for um, the landscape painting. Okay. Just going to take a little bit of red. I'll gray it back a bit. Gray it back a little bit more. I'm just going to make a note really for the... Um, For the roof there. Now I'm just putting colour down so that I can see it, but that's not the colour I'm going to leave it, if that makes sense. Little chimney there. Okay, so now we are going to block in the sky. Going to block in the sky. Um, yeah, Matthew, I, I, in our, I don't, don't want to sound like I'm promoting our courses at the London Paint Academy all the time, but I've done a, a whole video on mixing greens and how to get create really realistic looking greens rather than buying tube greens. Because the problem is, you walk into an art supplies store and tell me if you haven't done this, right? I think we all do this. And you see this array of different colours um, and all these pre-mixed colours there, tubes of green and so on. In fact, I'll put some of this green out. And, um, you know, they have gum tree. I'm an Australian, so gum tree green. Um, just bear with me for one sec. I'll be back in one moment. Sorry about that, folks. Just the posty came. <laughs> I don't like leaving things out the front um, when they deliver stuff. So, um, yeah, so the problem is you've got all these different colours and it's so tempting to buy them. But as a beginner, if you're just starting out, when you buy them, you, uh, you run the risk of not learning how to mix your paint. And I think that's a real shame if you don't learn the basic skills of uh, mixing paint. Okay. Okay, I'm just pausing because the comments are going past so fast. Oh, Island Stephen, okay, cool. Catherine's never seen underpainting in colour, okay. Andrea, yes, they do, absolutely. Can you use acrylic and water-soluble oils together? Haven't done it. Um, I can't see any reason why you couldn't block in with acrylic and then put the water soluble on top, but mixing them together I doubt very much because they are oil paints. And the only difference is the linseed oil that binds the pigment together has been modified. So that's a very different, um, it's a very different chemical structure, you know, from, um, from acrylic paint, I would think. Okay, let us play around with our sky. I'm going to paint a, didn't clean my brush very well. I'm going to paint a sky with a little bit of a sunsetting feel to it. 
So just using my yellow ochre and alizarin crimson. And we'll just put that out behind these trees here. Probably need to be a little bit lighter. I'll just run it down into the uh, darks of those trees. Now that paint's still fairly thin. There's a bit of water in there. But it's not as thin as the uh, darks that I was when I was drawing those in. With oil paints, I always find that if you paint your darks thin, then they tend to dry off a bit quicker and you can work back into them quicker. Uh, if, you paint, if you start off with your darks too thick, then you sort of have trouble then laying over your mid-tones and your highlights. Um, okay. All right, so for some of you it's Monday night, for us it's Tuesday morning, and uh, doesn't really matter, does it? It's always a great time to paint. Just get a little bit of blue and white up there. Tell me, is that blue showing through? Can you leave a comment and just let me know if you can see that blue okay? Because one of the challenges that I have is the studio lights do tend to wash out the lighter tones. So uh, yeah, just let me know if that's coming through okay. And I'll darken up that blue over on this side here. You can see I'm not using any water with this. Um, I typically, when I come into my sky, I. I was a bit thin over here, I think, so I'm going to have to rework into that. Uh, but I usually like to get my sky in in one pass. But for this painting, I'm just going to keep the sky really simple. I think if this subject matter is strong, like we've got a really strong centre of interest here, you're going to have a little person out the front of this house and this, you know, this pathway leading by, um, it creates a um, you know, nice little intimate scene. So if that's the case, you don't want to have your sky competing with that with too much information there. Blue's fine. Excellent. Thank you folks for that. Because I like the studio lights here make it a little bit difficult for video, but if it's coming through good, then I'm happy about that. Um, yeah, so you don't want to have your sky too busy. Temptation will be, you know, put clouds and things up in there. Um, but then it's all about managing the eye through a painting where, you know, and leading the viewer's eye through a painting. And if you have too many competing areas within a painting, then um, the centre of interest uh, sort of gets overlooked a bit. I need a bit of that orange down in here. And then I'll just work those two in together. Hopefully I'm managing to keep out of the shot as much as possible. It's actually not an easy thing filming painting because um, 
the last thing you want me is my head in the shot, right? Which means that in order to get the right camera angle, you've got to sort of set it up so that you're standing to one side when you paint, which is obviously not ideal. You get used to it. But One thing I'm definitely glad about is not having the palette up on the backboard anymore. So that's been a big improvement, I feel. Just going to soften out that paint. Now, it's because it is quite thin, it's a little difficult to move it around. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to let that just tack off a bit. And when it's when that water's dried out of it enough, I'll come back on and I'll rework over this part of the sky. Okay. So while we're waiting for that to happen, While we're waiting for that to happen, good chance for you to ask any questions and for me to have a sip of coffee. So what questions do you have so far? It's always a shame when you come to the end of the coffee. I love my coffee, what can I say? Um, thanks, Barbara. I like the colours. Thanks, Yvonne, for the feedback. Cool. So, yeah, what questions do you have, guys? Do you have any questions for me? Sky looks great. I'm just going to wander around the back of the studio here and have a close look while I'll give you a chance to ask any questions you might have. No, it's not looking too bad. Not looking too bad. Again, keeping it simple. Trying to create a feeling of a late afternoon. Um, the sun sort of setting out over the ridge. Just soften that bit in there. The painting is too thin in here though, so I will need to come back and do that. But we'll do that as a, you know, as a tidying up at the end. How many sugars do I have in my coffee? None. I have black coffee in. <laughs> no sugars. Um, I've got to lose, <laughs> lose some weight, so sugar's out. Um, I like the path that leads to the sunset. Yeah, it's got a kind of uh, dreamy feel about it, but also it has hope and optimism and... Um, yeah, like I don't, you guys probably know Thomas Kincaid. There's different artists have different opinions, but the one thing about his paintings is they always had this sense of a better day and hope and optimism, and I think that's why they were so popular. And you know, this sort of intimate little setting. Um, and Richard Chemersky, who was on the call here, he's a great Australian landscape artist who paints really nice little intricate and, and intimate cottage scenes as well, and has been an inspiration for me. And there's something about that little home setting with a sunset and a path leading towards the sunset. So that's a really interesting point, Gladys. Thank you for that. Okay. What size brush? Uh, what size brush? I'll pop that one up. For those who are just joining us, you can get a free course at the Learn to Paint Academy at that web address on the screen at the moment. What size brush? Um, you know what? I. I have no idea what size they are. I have a big one. <laughs> I've never been one to get caught up in what size, you know. So basically, in the more method of painting that we teach at the Learn to Paint Academy, I say we're going to use three colours, which you've seen, and three steps. So we're in step two at the moment, which is our blocking, and three brushes, right? So basically, I use a flat brush. It's a hog hair bristle brush, and I've got a, the biggest one I could find in the, on the uh, display. And I've got a medium one, and I've got a small one, right? So um, just use those flat brushes. And, and look, is there a number on them? It's got a 579. <laughs> well, they all say 579, Jazz Art. These are cheap little hog hair bristle brushes, and um, a big, a medium, and a small is, uh, is what I get. Um, the other brush that I use a lot, especially on bigger canvases, is that one. Now, that's exactly the same as that brush just different handles, just slightly wider. Okay, it's about a one inch wide. Um, great for blocking in and getting color down fast, right? Um, Yvonne thinks it's a 12 and you might be right. As I said, I've never looked at the sizes. I just go and say, I want a bigger, small and a medium. 
and um, I pay a couple of dollars for these. You know, like this gesso brush comes in a pack of three. It's about seven dollars. And um, well, let me show you. The... Comes in a pack of three. So there's a larger one. All right. So they're Montmart. If you're in Australia, you probably got the equivalent in other countries. You know, check on Dick Blick and those sort of websites. Um, the, the thing is, I, I, I paint in acrylics like I'm using oils. So I use a hog hair bristle brush rather than a synthetic brush. And because of that, we can transfer the skills that we learn or that we teach you at Learn to Paint Academy, transfer those skills from uh, the acrylics across to the oils, right? And, and the water mixable oils in the middle. So um, hope, hopefully you've written down that web address, learntopaint.info for a free course at the Learn to Paint Academy. So yeah, I don't know what size they are. Thank you, Julie. Appreciate that. Julie is a great plain air painter around the Sunshine Coast here, so I'm glad that you've been able to join us. Okay, do we have any other questions? Have you experimented with retarders? Um, Matthew, I... At the Learn to Paint Academy, we... So the answer to the question is yes, I have. Yeah, absolutely. The, um, the project that we put out yesterday, which was the Autumn uh, Reflections, I used a liquefying medium. Um, so yeah, I've used all the mediums. I've got every medium you can think of here. You know. So there's tons of different mediums that you can get. Retarders are one of them. They slow down the acrylic drying process. But what I do at the Learn to Paint Academy, all of our courses and projects are aimed at people who are just starting out. And so I've tried to simplify the painting process right down to the you know, most basic um, approach. And I've t taken out all the things that I felt you didn't need. Like you don't need 35 colours on your palette, for instance, right? You need three. Um, you don't need 100 brushes, you need three. And um, so I've taken out the mediums. That's not to say they're not valid, but you can do an acrylic painting with just water, right? So th that's the way I generally teach. Um, as we add more intermediate and advanced courses, then we'll add in um, mediums and things like that. So yeah, absolutely, they're great to use. If you're just starting out, keep it simple. You know, just a bit of water will thin the paint down. And if you want to learn how to keep the acrylic paint open longer, um, there's different techniques and we've got videos on, on how to do that. Okay, so I hope that helps, mate. Okay, better get back to painting. G'day, Marie, welcome. Cindy says those large brushes look like a Home Depot brush too. Yeah, you might be right. Um, it's just a matter of experimenting. You want to find a cheap, hog hair bristle, it might not be hog hair, but a bristle hair, natural hair brush. Um, and in, that way you can scrub and be really rough with them if you're only paying a couple of dollars. Thank you, Diane, for watching. Have a great day. Okay, enough talking, Rod. Come on, let's get some painting done. I was hoping the coffee would kick in by now, but we're getting there. Okay, we need to get a green field in here. Um, and we're going to highlight that field right through here. So let's have a look at the painting, at the, the original. So you can see right around the little lady there in that field, I've got it all highlighted. Um, and that's what we want to try and achieve is that sort of effect, right? Um, how long have I been painting, Sarah? I've been painting for about eight years. I did my first oil painting in November 2010. So uh, yeah, the backboard, I can't take credit for the backboard idea with all the color on it. That was uh, you know, just copying Robert Hagen, another great Australian artist. So um, yeah, so you can see the green, the little highlight on the field there. That's what we want to try and achieve. Now normally, normally I would do an underpainting here. Well, what I mean normally, I'll do it today as well. We'll do an underpainting. It just means that we may not finish this painting today. Yeah, overwhelm is the biggest killer for beginners, Matthew. Um, it really is. There's so much. You know, you walk into an art supplies store, and uh, if you were to listen to the to the uh, manufacturers, um, then uh, you know, <laughs> you, you'd, well, the first day I walked into a, I was a two dollar shop. I was buying a coffee mug, and I turned around and I was in the art supplies section, and there was like you know, 101 colors and brushes, and I bought everything, right? little voice in my head just said, buy everything. <laughs> and um, 
it does become confusing and overwhelming. And so I struggled to learn, and that's when I um, thought, okay, there's got to be a better way for beginners to um, to start to learn how to paint. And um, having been involved in adult education and ex you know things like accelerated learning and so on in other fields, I thought I'm going to try and work out a way to make it easier for beginners to learn. And that's what we're all about at the uh, Learn to Paint Academy, right? Is how do we break the process down, make it simpler for beginners? And um, that's what my mission is, is to make painting easy and enjoyable for beginners. Because I started going to classes, workshops, with some pretty well-known artists. And, um, and I realised that most of them are such great artists that they've forgotten most of what they did in the early stages. That's not a criticism of them. Uh, it's just, you know... The better you get at something, the more it moves to your unconscious mind. So you start to do it automatically or by intuition, which makes it harder to then teach, right? So I wanted to systematise or, or create some sort of methodology where beginners could learn a lot easier. And that's what, we're, that's what my mission is, that's what we're working on at the Learn to Paint Academy. I've got other people around the world teaching the more method of painting. Um, John's on the line here. Um, he's in Taiwan um, starting to teach and we've got people all around the world now teaching the more method of painting because it works. I'm going on a bit of a rant, aren't I? Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, it works. And, you know, I started teaching workshops and so on and the p people in our classes started to get really good results, you know, and, and then I thought, I wonder if I could teach others to teach the method. And so I've been, for the last few years, been certifying art teachers to teach what we teach at the Learn to Paint Academy. Um, so we've got art teachers now in Canada, Ireland, UK, USA, New Zealand, Saudi Arabia, Taiwan with John, and, uh, and growing. So what am I doing here? I'm putting down a warm tone as an underpainting, okay? So there's different ways of painting. I could have gone direct, I could have gone straight in with my greens and painted in you know, a dark green field and then laid it over, um, over the top of that. But I, I prefer to do a warm tone like this um, initially, just a really thin mix, and then paint my greens over that. So why would I do that? Well mainly because red, you can see I'm getting warmer as I come forward. So as I get into the foreground here, I'm getting warmer. And red is a complement of green, right? So how do you make your greens really hum and vibrate? This gets back to Matthew's question earlier. How do you make those greens really pop uh, and mix different greens? Well, sometimes it's about the underpainting as well, what you've got underneath them. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate that, mate. Your uh, lovely wife did a terrific job last night. And uh, we need to see you back at the club, so come on down. Cindy, I've been painting for 30 years, still learning, watching you is helping me how to lay down the underpainting. I'm loving it. Thank you, Cindy. I appreciate that. There's always something to learn, and, and you know, that's the thing I love about painting, is that I don't think I'll ever get to a point where I'll say, well, know all that now. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's just a, it's a journey. Appreciate the answer. Get over. Oh. Thank you, Winona. Thank you for joining us again. Now, yeah, I'm going to start publishing regular schedule of when we'll do the lives as we get better at them. <laughs> Gladys is glad she doesn't have to remember brush numbers. Same here. I have no idea about brush numbers, but um, Sarah hears that buy everything voice. <laughs> yep. One thing artists love, art supplies. But you know what? More art supplies doesn't make you a better artist. It's just a fact. Um, it's how you use them. And so part of what I'm trying to do with the more method of painting and you know, teaching at the Learn to Paint Academy, part of what I'm trying to do is show you that you only need three colours, uh, you know, three main colours. They're our main colours, right? And then you need a couple of booster colours just to punch them up. Um, even though we want to go and buy everything, you don't need to. Okay, let's flick some little bits of grass up there like that. 
pointed over my path. Not to worry, path's pretty easy to put back in. Okay, so that's our block in pretty much done. I won't block in the path. I don't think we need to. How are we going for time? Look, I only want to go for an hour with these, um, and we're pretty much there. And I think this kind of needs to dry off before we do anything else. So I'm thinking that we might leave it there for this one. Um, just get that corner in. We might leave this to dry off and have another go at this maybe in a couple of days time, which will be my, what is it today, Tuesday? Um, we'll come back on my Thursday and then we'll do step three of the more method, right? So we've done step one, our drawing. We've done step two, um, which is the blocking. So that's what we've basically done there is blocked in our darks, um, our sky and our foreground. And uh, we'll come back and do step three, which is our details, highlights and, and little finishing touches. Um, probably on Thursday. So look out for details on that. Now I am going to, um, let me just give my hands a bit of a clean. The other thing I love about water mixable oils is the cleanup is so much easier than traditional oils and even bit easier than um, acrylics. So you should definitely check them out. Um, what I'm going to do is do a giveaway. So for somebody on Facebook, I'm going to give away a little tote bag here with the learn to paint and my smiley face, right? So somebody on Facebook's gonna win that, and somebody on YouTube will win a mouse mat. And I've got other things to give away, but today I'm gonna give away those two. So to win, just type in the comments, and, and I'll, I'm just gonna have to pick the first that I see on Facebook and the first that I see on YouTube, right? Um, what are the three steps of the more method of painting? If you type that into the comments, and um, if you're the first person I see, if you're on Facebook, whoop, then I'll send you a little art bag. And if you're on YouTube, I'll send you a mouse mat. So that way you can have my <laughs> happy face staring at you every time you use a computer. So what are the three steps of the more method? If you list them out, I'm not gonna look at the comments for a moment and um, I'll come back and we'll look at those in just one moment. First person that I see uh, is going to, to win. So I'll give you 10 more seconds while we're doing that. If you just join us for the first time, um, come over to the Learn to Paint Academy and register for a free course. So the, the address is on the screen there, www.learntopaint.info. Um, you can register for a free course. I go through three different painting demos and I talk about the more method of painting in more detail for you. So come over and check it out. Okay, so I'm gonna just scroll back on our Facebook comments here. You have to be quick to win it. Very first person who got it. Whoop. G'day Claire, welcome. Another one from Ireland, that's awesome. Adriana says, me, I want the bag. Well, that's not quite the answer I'm looking for. The three steps. And the first person is Julia Chabwick. Fantastic, Julia, awesome. So Julia, you're going to win the art bag. Julia's answer, draw, block, and highlight, right? They're the three steps of the more method. Step one, the drawing. Step two, block in. Step three, the highlight. So let's have a look over on YouTube and see who's won. Uh, let me see. G'day, Valerie in Washington. Thanks for joining us. Thumbs up, everyone. Valerie says, cute. <laughs> I'm not sure is that if you're referring to me or the painting. Winona, sketch, block in and finish. I'll take that as an answer, Winona. Um, so congratulations, you have won the limited edition mouse mat from Learn to Paint live stream. Um, so congratulations, Winona, if you email me, rodmoreart at gmail.com or contact me via Facebook Messenger and um, let me know your address and I'll send that in the post to you. And Julie, I think I'm seeing you on Saturday. Um, so I'll give you your art bag then. So folks, thanks for joining me. I'm gonna stick around for a few more minutes and I'll answer any questions. Heaps of you got it right, so well done. <laughs> Ian Appleus says, coffee, coffee, coffee. I've run out, Ian, which is why we've only got the one hour time frame on the live stream because um, coffee runs out and so do I. So <laughs> um, you do need quick fingers. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a giveaway um, each time. I've got coffee mugs to give away and uh, I'll give away some of our DVDs and I probably will also give away a couple of lifetime memberships, but we're gonna make that one a little bit harder. Lifetime memberships to the Learn to Paint Academy. 
the mouse mats cute <laughs> they are cute i am um, for those who are asking i didn't do the caricature um that was done by somebody on fiverr and uh you know the marketing gurus tell me i have to do branding and stuff like that which um maybe you do mate. i don't know but um i, I kind of like the idea of turning myself into a bit of a cartoon character thank you all for joining me i'm just seeing if there's any questions thanks sarah thanks misty happy painting to you too um thanks Stephen, adriana claire thank you well heaps of you got it right so you're just gonna have to be just gonna have to be real fast <laughs> for next time but look out i will probably do this again on thursday i'll come back and we'll do step three all righty thank you all very much for joining me have a great day um if you're watching this after the stream leave questions comments and i'll see if i can get back and answer those um at some point but uh have an awesome day and thank you for joining me